today is from Luke chapter 10. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, the Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He came to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on him. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The gospel. Dear hearers of the word of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bible. But in the Greek, the word is splot 
Peninsulae, we get the word for spleen from that word. He felt it in his, he felt it in his guts. He, have you ever felt, have you ever had the time when your, your stomach fell? You know, you, you feel that pit in your stomach, like, oh my gosh. Uh, maybe, maybe it's someone you saw or one of your children gets hurt, you feel it, you literally feel it in your guts. That's, that's compassion. That, that's what that, that's where the word compassion comes from. This was very moved with compassion. And it all started uh, because uh, a lawyer wanted to test Jesus, and Jesus ends up telling him a parable. Uh, what, do, what do parables do? Well, they function as metaphors, uh, challenging or inviting the audience to a new or deeper experience of God's dominion. Dominion means rule. God's way of ordering things. And, uh, dominion identifies those who are the last, the lost, the least, the little, and the dead, or in this case, Samaritan. Why did Jesus use, happen to use that guy? Why in the world a Samaritan? Well, uh, maybe it was because he had, to, a couple weeks ago we read this story, and Jesus uh, was going up to, he, he, was on the, he was going to be taken up, and he set his face to go to Jerusalem, he sent two messengers ahead of him, or messengers, and on their way they entered a village of the Samaritans, to what? To make ready for him, to make ready for Jesus, to prepare uh, the ground, to, to get it ready. But they did not receive him because his face was set to Jesus. It doesn't say what that really means. They, they did not uh, receive him. Did they chase the, the messengers out? Did they, did, you know, did they uh, not want to have anything to do with him because he was Jewish? Luke doesn't tell us this. But when the disciples, James and John, uh, saw this, saw what had happened, uh, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Now, that, that's not usually the response most people get when you, when you get rejected. But right away, James and John thought that, and Jesus rebuked him for it. And rebuking means said, no, don't, what are you talking about? You can't do that. Uh, there is a story in the Bible where fire is called down from heaven to the unbelievers. And I've used it in some of my favorite pictures uh, of Mount Carmel, of Elijah, uh, calling down fire from heaven to consume the, uh, the, the sacrifice. And as a result, the prophets of Baal were killed because they lost the content. And so James and John may have been hearkening back to this and, hey, they're, they don't want anything to do with us. They must not believe in Jesus. They must not believe in God. Well, for whatever reason, let's, let's do what Elijah did. We, we have that power. And uh, Jesus says, no, 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 that's, we're not going to do that. Another, another opportunity where the word Samaritan comes up in the Bible is when Jesus was going uh, from Jerusalem, or from uh, Galilee to went through Samaria to a place called Sychar, which is kind of right in the middle of Samaria. And uh, a well was there, and he met a woman there from Samaria. And they had this conversation. The disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So he's, it's just him and her. And they have this conversation. And right away the woman looks at him without, he doesn't say anything or he does say, he says, what well, can give me a drink? And then she says this, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And then John, the writer of the gospel, puts in, why is this such a big deal? And he writes, he explains this, because Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Well, why do Jews not have dealings with Samaritans? What is going on? What is the history? Why this animosity? Why do James and John, the first thing they do is, let's just roast them all. And why this, this even this woman says, oh, you're not supposed to talk to me. What, you're a Jew. We don't talk. Why? Why are you here? She's perplexed by it. Well, it all happened many years ago. Uh, 
721 BC is when the Assyrians uh, army came and, and, and attacked the northern uh, kingdoms of Israel. And the northern kingdoms were nor north of Jerusalem. And Samaria was part of that. And uh, they came in and they scattered everybody out. They, they just, everyone fled because of, because of the Assyrians. And they were a very powerful army. They were very technologically advanced, especially to the northern tribes of Israel. They were mostly shepherds and ranchers and that sort of thing with, with, with sheep and, and, and goats and stuff. They were no match for, uh, for the Assyrian, Assyrian army. Well, some of them, uh, those that, that had the means and the, and the animals and the, and the carts to get away and to escape the Assyrian army, they, they left, they fled. So a lot of the Jews from that area uh, scattered away, to, never to return. Those that didn't have the means, those that didn't have any money or income or whatever, they just couldn't escape, uh, they were captured. And some of them uh, were, uh, the soldiers uh, took them as wives, as, uh, you know, pillage, they pillaged, raped and pillaged. Well, uh, some of them uh, stayed there. And so the descendants of the Assyrian army lived in the same country. Uh, they just kept living there. And they eventually became known as the Samaritans. So in Jude, and then they, they had their own temples, they had their own mountain, Mount Gerizim. Uh, uh, they, they, they worshiped God there. They felt, that we don't have to go to Jerusalem to worship. And in fact, when Jesus was having the conversation, I'll go back to her, uh, Jesus was talking, and she said, well, you Jews, you tell us, we can, the only place we can ever go to is Jerusalem. That's the only valid place. And Jesus said, well, I want to talk about God in terms of spirit and truth. Those who worship God in spirit. That's what I'm talking about. It's not the place, it's the person who you worship. Okay? It's not a matter where you go, it's who you worship. And that's the most important thing. Anyway, uh, but she, she illustrates and she's talking about the, the differences and the barriers between the two. And so uh, we get this. Uh, this is the background of why Samaritans were so uh, rejected and avoided and despised. Well, anyway, uh, this is. Uh, this is is a map of uh, during the time of Jesus, okay? And this, there's a circle up here. That's Samaria. That, that's where, if Jesus was going to go from Capernaum to Jerusalem, uh, they, they walk, he goes through there. That, that's the area. That's where it is. So Jesus tells the story. A man was uh, going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. This is a satellite photo of one of the roads. It's coming down there. And uh, right away, those days, everyone knew the reputation of this road, this, this treacherous road, and uh, and uh, there's a road in, uh, I think it's Alabama or somewhere in the south, a motorcycle riding road. It's called the Dragon's Tail. It's got so many twists and turns. If you talk to people on ride motorcycles, they go, oh yeah, I've been on the Dragon's Tail. You've got to be really careful. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you've been to the Black Hills, uh, if anybody's been to the Driven on the Needles Highway, Okay, you know how twisty and turning and stuff. You gotta go slow, you can't go faster. Well, when, when, he, when Jesus says, a man was traveling, a man by himself was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and right away at reading, people are thinking, why in the world would a man want to do that? Why would a man do that? This is what they're thinking. You idiot. You gotta you got have at least 15 guys with you. Don't go by yourself. That's where all the robbers hang out. You're gonna get you're not gonna make it. It isn't gonna happen. And so right away, people are listening to Jesus going, this doesn't sound like this is gonna end well. It's kind of equivalent to by starting a story. On a dark and story we die. Well, okay, something bad's gonna happen. You know, don't open that closet door. Well, he keeps on going. And fell into the hands of robbers. Of course he did. The idiot. He never should have gone in every single day. Yep, exactly right. It's his own fault. It's his own fault. He never should have gone in the first place. Why did he have to go to Jericho anyway? Stay at home. Well, anyway, he fell into the hands of robbers who stripped and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And the word for robbers here is interesting here. Uh, it's the word, it's called, it's listing. Listing. There's 
two different types of rhombus. There's the klepte and the liste. The klepte, we get the word for klepto, klep, kleptomaniac, something who steals things. A, a klepte is a robber who sneaks in at night. You don't even know, you don't even know what happened. You go to the safe and it's open, it's empty. It's locked. You go, how did that happen? Or you, you look around and say, well, where did that thing go? And you realize somebody came in. Well, I didn't hear anything. It's somebody who's a stealth, a klepte. And it's a thief. Okay. A list day is going to knock you over the head and kill you and take everything in by threat, by force. It's, a ter it's another word for a terrorist. Or a political revolutionary, uh, we find out at the end of Jesus' life, Pilate has a chance to release Jesus. Because during the Passover, there's a, there's a festival, and they have, a, they have a, uh, a tradition that you can release a prisoner <coughs> for, for free on the Passover. And Pilate says, hey, because Pilate didn't want to, he didn't want to, he, he, he didn't want anything to do with the death of Jesus. Do you, want, do you want me to release this King Jesus? The King of the Jews? And they all know. Crucify him. Well, uh, what do you mean? You can, you, can release, you can release him. He said, no, release for us Barabbas instead. And John's Gospel said, Barabbas was in a listing. A listing. He was a, a bandit, a robber, a revolutionary insurrectionists. He caused violence. He tried to do that and, and the crowd wanted that. And he said, well, this man fell victim to a man like Barabbas. Okay? And that's, that's what happened. And they left him half dead. Uh, not by chance, a uh, priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. Now part of this, part of the, when the lawyer was listening to Jesus tell of this parable, he was nodding in agreement. He was going to say, yes, that, that's appropriate. Uh, wait, why, why would it be appropriate for a priest or Levite to, to not help someone who was stripped and, and uh, left half dead? Well, in the, in the world of, of, uh, of the Jewish system, the Jewish worldview, uh, there's different places, different people, different animals, and, and the, the universe, the, the space of the world, all fit together in, in order from the, the, the holiest place to the least holiest. And in terms of uh, place and people, the holiest of the holy of holies, uh, the belly button of the earth, is the holiest part of the temple, and only the high priest can go there once a year. And then the holy place would be the, the, the holy of holies would be back behind this wall if this was the temple. The holy place would be in this area, and the priests and the Levites could be up here. The priests and the Levites, if they're not defiled, if they do the proper. Uh, themselves pure. And uh, if you touch a dead body, he, after all, he's half dead. They don't know which, which part of the half is he dead. You know, which half is dead, I'm afraid. How bad is he? If he's dead dead, then not, they can't go to the temple. They can't perform their duties. They're unclean, ritually. They can't be the high priest. They can't be the Levite. You can't be what you're supposed to be. And in this realm, this is where they're at. They're, they're number two. They're right up top. And then there's the altar, the court of the men, the court of the women, the court of the Gentiles, the holy place, the holy city, the rest of the non-Israelite world, and that's where Samaritans go. If that's a holy of holies, the Samaritans belong in, uh, in uh, Castle. That's a far for us. They're way out there. They're just, you can't even see how far they go. It's Millions of miles away. That's where the Samaritans are. And other everybody else. They can't be there. They're, they're in the same level as somebody who has leprosy. You can't touch them. You can't be them. You can't associate with them. And so that's why the, the lawyer would say, yeah, that's so, that's so right. But then he says, uh, but 
chance a Samaritan came by and took pity on this man with oil on his wounds. Uh, he felt compassion. He felt the spot in somebody. He felt it in his guts. He helped him, put him on his own animal, took him into an inn, gave, gave the innkeeper two days' worth of pay, two denarii, and said, I'm going to come back someday, and I'm going to, whatever you owe, whatever it takes, to, I will take care of it. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The man was in. The man asked, who is my neighbor? Jesus doesn't ask or answer the question. He asked, who, who was neighborly? The man wanted to justify himself. Because in his worldview, my neighbor, because I'm a lawyer, I'm a Jewish lawyer, my neighbor is a fellow Jewish person. In fact, it's a fellow Jewish man. That's my neighbor. The rest don't apply. I'm not supposed to talk to anybody else. I mean, that's not, I, that's not who I associate with. And so that's what he wanted to know from Jesus. But Jesus says, who was a neighbor? And whenever I think of this story, every time I read it, I think of the best neighbor in the world. <laughs> All right. Have you, anybody seen that movie that came out last about the, about the do, kind of a documentary about that? How we started it and all that. How many people? Uh, you know, yeah. Who's my neighbor? I want to be your neighbor. What's that all about? Well, it's true. Right? What's it all about? Think about the Samaritan who was despised, rejected, and the one who heals. The one who will come again. Who does that remind you of? Jesus. He was despised, rejected. He was dead. He was stripped and put on the cross. The man, stripped and beaten, as good as dead. <coughs>